Okay, this video is going to be about number three from the 2009 Form B Calc A, B, and B, C exams. Um, and let's see what it looks like. So a continuous function f is defined on the closed interval of negative four to six. The graph of f consists of a line segment and a curve that is tangent to the x-axis at x equals three, as shown in the figure. Um, on the interval from zero to six, the function f is twice differentiable and f double prime is greater than zero. That's on the interval from zero to six. All right, so the first question is, is f differentiable at x equals zero? But it also says, use the definition of the derivative with one-sided limits to justify your answer. So this is really interesting. I can't really think of another problem that asks you to do this on the AP exam. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with the limit definition of the derivative, right? So if f prime of zero exists, then uh, this is true. f prime of zero, if it exists, will be equal to, the limit as x approaches zero of f of x minus f of zero all over x minus zero. So I'm gonna keep writing x minus zero, even though you could just write x. I think it will look weird when you don't write the zero, so I'm gonna leave that. So this is only true if the limit exists. So you can look at the picture and you can definitely tell that the function is not differentiable at zero, right? Because there's a sharp turn, but we need to use one-sided limits to justify that. So I'm gonna look at the limit from the left as x approaches zero from the left, and then the limit as x approaches zero from the right. So, limit as x approaches zero from the left, f of x minus f of zero over x minus zero equals, um, so if you just kind of like look at it, you're going up two and over three, it's just a line. Um, so here, so two thirds. And then uh, there's kind of an issue with finding the limit as x approaches zero from the right because uh, I don't really know that I know what that is. I don't even know what that function is. I just happen to know that it's uh, concave up, really. Um, so what I do know, though, is uh, the tangent line, the slope of the tangent line as you approach zero from the, uh, from the right, like this, the slope of the tangent line is definitely gonna be uh, negative or less than zero. So since uh, 2 thirds is not less than zero, uh, there's no way that f prime of zero exists. So what I'm gonna write is, since the limits are not equal, f prime of zero does not exist. And I think that does it. All right, so that's a weird one, uh, but every once in a while they throw in something kind of new and sort of interesting. So let's take a look at the next one. For how many values of a between negative four and six is the average rate of change of f? So average rate of change is algebra one slope. You should say that in your head every time you read average rate of change. Um, is the average rate of change on the interval from a to six equal to zero? Okay, so we're looking for where the average rate of change is equal to zero, so we're looking for where the algebra one slope is equal to zero, so I'm gonna write this down. You might already realize that that just means a horizontal line, but if you don't, that's okay. Um, so I write it down, and then if I solve this, uh, whatever, I'm gonna solve for f of a, I guess. Uh, I get that f of six must be equal to f of a. So f of six, we're actually given the point six one on the graph. So what I'm gonna do is just go kind of across there and you can see that there are two places where this happens. And the question just says like, how many values of a are there? So I'm gonna say there are two values of a where a is between negative four and six. Um, so I have that work there, which I think justifies it. And I'm gonna move on to the next question. Is there a value a between negative four and six for which the mean value theorem applied to the interval from a to six guarantees a value of c where a is between, I don't know, a is less than c is less than six, at which basically does the mean value theorem apply, um, at which f prime of c equals one third? Justify your answer. Okay, so this is very much a mean value type of thing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use, but it's a little backwards, right? Because we're told f prime of c has to equal one third. One of the endpoints, however, is six. So what I'm gonna do is starting at six, I'm gonna use a slope of one third and just kind of like go backwards and see if I hit the curve. So this is one, and then this would be three. So if I draw that line segment, you can tell if I extended that line, we would never hit um, the function again. So yeah, there definitely is a place, right? Because I found a secant line that has the same slope as one third. Well, that has a slope of one third. So I'm gonna say 
Um, the slope there is one third. So the answer is yes. And now how do we answer this? Well, I need to justify it, right? So I need the uh, requirements of the mean value theorem. So I'm gonna say F is continuous on the closed interval from three to six and differentiable on the open interval from three to six. Um, and then I'll say, therefore, by mean value theorem, and now I'll just write it F prime of C is equal to F of six minus F of three over six minus three, which is definitely one third. And that's true for some C between three and six. So the question was, is there a value of A? Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, uh, yeah, A is equal to three. If A is equal to three, then this thing works. All right, let's take a look at the last question. So the function g is defined by g of x equals the integral from zero to x of f of t dt between negative four and six. Um, what intervals contained in negative four, six is the graph of g concave up? Okay, so uh, this is a pretty standard question. It's actually a second fundamental theorem question, I guess. Um, so g of x is equal to, this is just the given, the integral from zero to x of f of t dt. So I'm gonna second fundamental theorem this thing, which means uh, the integrand evaluated at the upper bound, the upper bound needs to be the function, integrand at the upper bound times the derivative of the upper bound, which is just one. Um, so I know that g prime is equal to f of x. So now, if I want the function to be concave up, I need its derivative to be increasing. So I'm gonna say, this is our graph of f, and so f is g prime, so I need the derivative to be increasing. So g of x is concave up when g prime of x, which is equal to f of x, is increasing. And then we're gonna like look at our graph and see where that happens and then write our answer. All right, so there, and then uh, here, the function's increasing. The, the graph of f, which is g prime, is increasing. Here, the same thing is happening. So I think we can write our answer. So I'm gonna say, uh, therefore, g of x is concave up on the interval from negative four to zero, and then also the integral, uh, the interval from three to six. And uh, if you wanna explain it a little bit more, uh, you could uh, go the extra step and say that when f is increasing, f prime is greater than zero and f prime equals g double prime, if you wanna add that. I don't think that's actually necessary in this case. Um, but anyway, that's the whole question. I hope you found this helpful and good luck.